So this video is to the YouTube user Barry or Barry1234, who for the purposes of this, I hope you won't mind, will be referred to as B. But before I get on to B for the rest of this video, I'd like to just make a clarification about the video uh, his comments came from that led me to make this response. I made a video recently about the continuing drama between Thunderfoot and Dawa films. Now, I was kind of hoisted on my own petard on that one. I made a video about drama that ended up contributing to the drama in some small way, you know, in that it's once again, it's like a reply girl thing. So on that one, yeah, sorry guys, didn't mean to add to the drama. I'm not going to apologise for what I said, because I think what I said was fairly reasoned, but maybe just keep my opinions to myself on that one next time, rather than just keep wading in the same old boring crap over and over again. That said, I think a lot of people may have got the wrong end of the stick. I don't have a problem with Thunderfoot when he sticks to science. His scientific videos, such as Why Do People Laugh at Creationists, are beyond reproach. They're fantastic. I think when he starts trying to talk about faiths in total, he starts to stumble because that is not generally his expertise. But anyway, that is by the by. The comments I'm answering from B were as follows. Burning Qurans is something every free human should do every day, until no stupid Muslim ever protests against that anymore. Same with drawing Muhammad. All free humans should draw 10 Muhammads every day until all Muslims get over their stupid shit. Well, you know, a lesser person would try and point out the irony in you telling free thinkers what to do. But, you know, I know that wasn't your intention. Your intention was to say that a free thinker should be able to do that without the backlash of a religious authority. And I agree. They should be able to do that. Everyone should have the right to a authority not telling them what they can and cannot do beyond a secular state. That I'm in 100% concordance with. Whether I would burn a Quran or draw a picture of Muhammad, completely different matter. Because I'm me and you're you. We have different viewpoints. That's the beauty of a fair and free society. We can have differing views on how to go about things. So I won't object to the fact that you want to draw Muhammad or burn a Quran. That's your thing. I have criticised Thunderfoot for this, the burning of the Quran before, not because he burnt the Quran, but I would want to see him burn a Bible and a Bhagavad Gita and a Torah as well, because it's all religion that he has a problem with, not just Islam. I felt he was picking up on the weapon of choice of a hateful, bigoted Christian preacher down in Florida, not trying to make a great stand for freedom of speech. It felt like he picked the wrong weapon to do it. Draw Muhammad Day, I have less of a problem with. But, again, I have my way of doing things, you'll have your way of doing things. I respect your way of doing it, but it's not for me. I prefer discourse and debate. Dawa tried to get Thunderfoot killed. He wanted to see Muslim barbarians attack Thunderfoot, beat him up, vandalise his property, threaten his family, and hopefully behead him with a machete for cameras. Wake up, dude. Now, I can't talk necessarily as to whether Dawa did or did not want him killed. I'm not Dawa, I can't make that mind up. I'm not him. But I do think Dawa was a douche for putting Thunderfoot's details and dot dropping out there. That's not cool. And trying to get him booted out of his job, again, not cool. Um, you know, Thunderfoot had only raised criticisms of Dawa's religious stances, so I don't think we can necessarily start dock dropping purely because we don't like what he's saying. So I think possibly a bit over the top there, but I understand where you're coming from. It wasn't cool what Dawa did and when he started posting uh, Thunderfoot's docs around to people, not cool. Some religious people are super sweet. That's not the point. All religion is still superstition. All superstition is still wrong. All superstition is still stupid and harmful. Show me how I am wrong. 
How can superstition be necessary and good? If Jainism is based on a lie, it's based on a lie. Non-violence should be based on something real, then it's good. Love your enemies, idiotic. It just gets you killed. Jews tried it with the Nazis. Work wonders for them, eh? Well, like I said in my comments, apart from breaking Godwin's law, which is the old adage of the longer an argument goes on, the first person who mentions the Nazis loses. But we're not going to go there. The point you came up with was all superstition is harmful and wrong. And if superstition isn't harmful, can I prove you wrong? I can't necessarily prove you wrong, but I would like to point you towards an article that was out recently in the March 17th edition of The New Scientist. Now, in this issue, round about page 42, Aaron, Aaron Orenazayan wrote the article, An Idea That Launched a Thousand Civilizations. Within that, the argument is made that, and I quote, a growing view is that religious beliefs and rituals arose as an evolutionary byproduct of ordinary cognitive functions. Once that happened, the stage was set for rapid cultural evolution that led to large societies with big gods. Some early cultural variants of religion presumably promote pro-social behavior such as cooperation, trust, and self-sacrifice, whilst encouraging displays of religious devotion such as fasts, food taboo, extravagant ritual, and other hard to fake behaviors which reliably transmit believers sincere faith and signal their intention to cooperate. Religion thus forces anonymous strangers into moral communities tied together with sacred bonds under common supernatural jurisdiction. In turn, such groups would have been larger and more cooperative and hence more successful in competition for resources and habitats. As they grew, these groups took their religions with them ratcheting up social solidarity in a runaway process that softened the limitations on group size imposed by kinship and reciprocity. Now that's only one opinion I understand, of course, and it's an opinion that is based in the fact that early hunter-gatherer societies started with small rituals and whatnot to unite the small hunter-gatherer communities so that we weren't bashing each other's skulls in for resources. It was only when we had the resources there and we were already a united community that the religions worked on the big gods and the control and other social policy. So the argument was that religion was possibly a uniting force in the beginning, but has now become some sort of general overarching control. And with you on that one, because I don't want religion controlling my life and telling me what to do. I'm a secularist. I'm an agnostic as well, so I'm not entirely sure about the whole thing, but I'm a secularist at heart. I believe my beliefs and your beliefs should have nothing to do with the public sphere of influence. As you say, though, superstition is harmful. Is it, though? It might be harmful for you and harmful for me, but if the person who believes in it earnestly believes that particular superstition, be it tarot, or horoscope, or crystal healing, or religion, and it works for them, I'm, I don't care what they want to do. If that's what they want to believe, that's fine. Long as they're not trying to jam it down my throats and make it part of government policy, then that's up to them. That is the choice of the individual. I don't care what people get up to with their religion when it's just them. It's when they start trying to invade that religion into the public sphere that I have a problem. But to sort of point your way as well for a little quick report because this kind of turned into a book report from the New Scientist. There was an article later on by Victor Stenger that says if there is a God we should be able to scientifically prove he exists. And as yet, no one has found a verifiable trial for the efficacy of prayer, near-death experience, or any intervention of God from various calls and miracles. So, who knows? You might have a point B. But, those are my views on the subject. Um, I hope they've been informative. I'd like to thank you for your comments. And I'd like to thank you for getting involved. And if you want to continue this, I'm up for it. Take care.